it's time to dig into the Dynasty trade market and look at three running backs and their player value for Dynasty Fantasy Football to see whether we want to buy, sell, or trade them, or maybe even hold them on our Dynasty teams. This is a weekly series that I do for running backs, and then also wide receivers going over three players' value and see where they're at and what we should do with them for our own Dynasty teams, taking a quick objective look at their player value. I'm looking at real trades, I'm looking at calculators, and everything else. A lot of information that's behind the paywall at other places that I'm giving it to you for free. Make sure you smash that subscribe button. I'm going to have a lot for you to help you build your dynasty fantasy football teams and get you ready for your rookie drafts. But let's get this started. Our first top running back off the ADP as we're going down the list by the week is Josh Jacobs. He's 25 years old, being drafted in startups as the RB9 per ADP and as the 34th player overall off the board last year he went off over 1600 yards rushing nine rb1 weeks two rb2 weeks he's on the franchise tag right now so we got another season with the raiders his offense is probably gonna look a little different but they're probably gonna use him to death they're probably gonna use him as the workhorse for another season the only question is can he hold up another year there has been injuries off and on throughout his career can he hold it down? But he has been very productive throughout his career as well. So this is a running back that might spark some interest. When he's a free agent next year, he'll be 26 years old. Will he be back with the Raiders? Will he be moving on free agency? We just have to see what this year does because things are very ambiguous in the running back landscape. But to the trade market here, on the calculator, on the trade analyzer at DLF, He's valued as the 102, the second rookie pick off the board there. Not quite B. John Robinson as he is the RB1 in startup drafts right now per ADP. And on actual trades per their trade finder, being traded for the 107. Another deal has him traded for the 105 and a second. Another deal, James Robinson, Dallas Goddard, a 201 and a 202. Another deal, a 2024 first and second and Isaiah Pacheco. Another one, a 2024 first, second, and third, then John Mechie. Another one, DK Metcalf, straight up. Another one, Stefan Diggs, straight up. Another deal, a 2024 first and a 206. Devonta Smith, straight up. A 2023 first and second, a 2024 second and two threes. Fundamentals say here, if you're in the middle of the road in your league or your bottom dweller, you're rebuilding, retooling, then it is a sell for you. However, if you're in the hunts, feel like you're top three, feel like there's a good chance you might win a league, looking at these deals here, you might be able to catch a productive running back at a decent price point. And things aren't always one way when a player's a buy or sell. It really depends on your situation here. Again, this time next year, I'll be around 26 years old, hitting free agency. It's got a lot of wear on the tires, so we don't look at this as a long-term play. But right now, you can catch something back at you if you're in the back end of your league. You're not expecting to compete until like 2025, 6, 7, something like that. You probably should have already dealt them in season, honestly. But right now, it's in the works. You might be able to catch something. Some of these deals are kind of light, too, like he's going undervalued. You can also tell that some of these managers are trying to be creative when they're trying to get the deal done. The 2024 picks that you're seeing a lot of these trades, that's happening because the 2023 class is heavily valued. So you're going to see that with some of these vets because they're trying to get creative to get these deals done. That's what the market's telling us. So you might have to be creative if you're trying to deal them away. If you're trying to buy them, I would be looking at a first and some change. And that change might be your second round rookie pick. That might be a player like Isaiah Pacheco, John Mechie with something else added to it. Or, if you're trying to deal him away too, Devonta Smith, a player of that caliber in that range, a young wide receiver is a good pivot too if you don't want to go with a buffet of picks. But I would look for picks and players, buffet of picks, young players come back at you. If I'm looking to buy, it looks like it's going to be a first and some change. The one or two, like the calculator says, isn't really happening in much deals. You're looking at people being creative with him when they're trying to purchase him. Next year's first, a little something, something with that. Maybe next year's draft or something like that. Somebody did that, a first, second, and third. I mean, a fourth and fifth. What more else is that for real? 
So really, your next year's draft in a player, maybe that's if you need that production. It's really on your situation. If you need that extra running back, say you got a good running back, and you want him as your RB2 or your RB1B or whatever, th that might be the deal to get if you're looking to get the production now and you don't care about the rookies you're here for the now. If you're here for the tomorrow, you got some options here. You're going to have to be creative. That's how it's looking like when it comes to buying them. The best times now, right before the season starts, his value is going to go up a little bit when it comes to selling. Rookie draft time. Rookie draft times when the picks are going to go up in value. Maybe in season as well when he's getting the production or right before the season. There's a lot of more opportunities when selling a player like this. Buying, though, his price is going to go up right before the season starts. And if he's getting production in season, which he will, because he's going to be the lead horse until something happens. Hopefully it doesn't. But you never know. Running backs are running backs. But going to our next running back here is another guy a lot of people like. We're in the middle portion of his career. And we're at a crossroads where things could happen one way or another. We're talking about Antonio Gibson. Soon he'll be 25 years old. He's being valued as the RB37 in ADP. 112th player off the board per ADP. So he does have some value. Last year he had two RB1 games, five RB2 games. 11.1 .1 PPR points per game, but 14 points per game or so in his previous two seasons. So he has been productive throughout his career, giving you average double-digit fantasy points, sharing a backfield right now with Brian Robinson. He's going to hit free agency in 2023. Wouldn't be surprised if this team takes a mid to late round pick at running back. Wouldn't be surprised, but I'm going to say that for almost every team, even if they're loaded at running back, because this is the draft to do that. And then the back part of the draft, teams will take shots for depth. And this is a dangerous draft class for the late rounder. So that late round running back could spark something. Trade market right now. Calculator saying a mid-second. And with that being said, when we look at the trade market, there are not many one-for-one -one trades. And I don't like talking about multiplayer trades because that gets sticky to present to you guys. And hard to capture the value because now that you're getting into situations here... But not many one-for-one -one trades. And really, because you got to be creative because his value is not matching the upside. And you're scared to get rid of the upside. Here are a few trades that went down. Adam Thielen in the 302. Nico Collins in the 312. Cortland Sutton. So they don't seem too appealing. But it really depends on what you want. At his price, you're using him as a package-up piece. So you're using him, another player him another pick and player him and another pick to either move up in your draft or move up the board to get the player you want you're using him plus something else to get what you want whether it's a better wide receiver an upgrade at running back that's how you're doing it if you're buying him you're trying to get those deals that we just read off you're trying to get something like that you're trying to sneak him away and honestly that's just how that works you're just trying to catch players on the cheap and that's why I go over this trades with you guys and give you some ideas on market value. Mid to late second on the calculator seems just right. I'm not going to really just dish him away for a third when I can just hold him unless there's a player in draft at the third that I want that I value a lot higher. Unless that happens, but honestly, it's probably not going to happen. Mid to late second seems right because early second, you're going to have some good values. Compared to other drafts, that's like a mid-first, late-first that's valuable. So honestly, that seems right. Getting deals done, you're going to have to be creative because not a lot of people are making deals with them. So more than likely, you're going to hold them. More than likely, you're going to hold them and see what happens unless you want to be creative or take a haircut because that's what's going to happen. But if you're trying to trade for them, I would just try and try and sneak them away. And during the draft is probably where you're going to do so if you're trying to get them. Once your tiers come off the board, where you're at in a good spot, maybe you can sneak them away. But this is a player you're just trying to sneak away with. Next player off the board is a cheap guy. Bottom of ADP, a bottom dweller. Usually we're saying the same thing about these players, but we have to cover them because the back end of the roster on our Dynasty Leagues matter. And some of us are in super, super deep leagues. Today we're talking about Travis Homer. That's how deep we're going. Soon he will be 25 years old. RB88 per ADP. 236th player off the board. He's still getting drafted, damn it. 
453 rushing yards and one touchdown in four seasons. It's not sexy. Signed a two-year deal, $4 million deal with the Bears. They have Dante Foreman, Khalil Herbert, Justin Ebner on the roster right now. And we got the draft that could make things murky for damn near every NFL team. And you can draft a seventh round rookie in this year's draft. It could make things kind of hairy for just about any roster clogger. Trade market says he's dirt cheap. Calculator says he's a fifth round pick. He's on waivers in most leagues. In some leagues, he's just a back in the roster guy. If you have to have him, he's just a throw in on the trade. More than likely, you're just going to let him sit. You're just going to watch the tea leaves throughout the season and camp. And then you'll just pull the trigger when it's ready. Let this dog lay and pick up if the attrition rolls his way. Right now, it's pretty risky right now with the draft. And you know what? He's free. If you're making a deal currently and he's on the roster, and you got a spot on your team to take on the roster spot. A lot of us are in some deep leagues. I'm 16 teamers. We're starting six wide receivers still. And we got some flexes. I understand. And you can get him as a throw in just to see. Just see, after all, the Bears are a little bit ambiguous. That kind of makes sense. More ambiguous the roster, the more you want to buy in on the bottom dwellers there, the RB3s, the RB4s. So that's something you want to look at, especially if you're in a deep, deep dino like that. So I don't mind doing that. I'm in some deep ones. And he might be sitting there in some leagues of mine as well, just waiting because I am in some incredibly deep leagues. So if you're in that situation... That's when you'll get them as a throw-in. You're basically, you're starting two running backs, three wide receivers, maybe a couple flexes or whatever, however you do it. 12 teams, probably not rosterable, unless you have an extension on your bench or something. Probably not rosterable. I don't imagine that. I'm in so many leagues, things at scale. Sometimes thinking off the rip on these videos is kind of hard. Probably not rosterable on the basic leagues, but on those deep leagues that are crazy, you're looking at a guy on the back end, and you're just hoping for the best. And it, since this is an ambiguous running back core, ambiguous offense all the general, you might want to look at him. But those are three running backs that we're looking at this week at their player value, seeing the market, seeing the tea leaves, giving you ideas of who to trade for. If there are other running backs you want to look at, I've got plenty of videos from this offseason. Go back and look at those trade videos. They have the same thumbnail, so you know what you're getting when you click on it. I try and bait you in with the title, but you know what it is. When you click on it, I'm covering three players, covering their value, giving it right down the line on both sides, and just trying to help you out with some ideas. Make sure you smash that subscribe button on the way out. It's going to help you build your dynasty teams going forward and make you a better dynasty gamer. I want to thank you for watching. Catch you on the next video.